Hey everyone, this is Dan. In this video, we're going to be making some generative art bookmarks. We're going to be drawing the bookmarks using P5JS, which is a JavaScript library for basically drawing pictures and making art with the computer. And we're going to take that, export an SVG, we're going to pen plot it on the Cameo, and what we'll end up with is three bookmarks. These are the three right here. And we'll look at them in a little bit more detail later. I'm not going to go through the, the writing the code portion in the video itself. What I will do is I'll include a link in the description down below and I'll give you the, the excerpt of the code so you can duplicate it on your own if you're interested. Um, but we'll take a look at the process for taking an image from P5.js, exporting it as an SVG, and then plotting it using the Cameo. So let's get started. Okay, so before we get to the actual pen plotting, what we need to do is uh, generate the images that we're going to use to plot. So we're going to start here in the text editor, and I'm not going to go through the process of writing the code in this video. What, I, what I'm going to do is include a blog post that, that goes through that and has the source code, um, and I'll link to that in the description below. So if you, if you do want to check that out, you know, feel free. But if not, we'll just kind of go through the mechanics of generating the SVG files, throwing them into the Cameo software, and then doing the plot itself. So one of the things I talked about in the blog post is that I like to use this random seed. And, and basically the random seed feeds the, feeds the script a value that enables you to recreate the same image every time. Without the random seed, what happens is every time you refresh the image, you, you end up with something different, but you don't really have a way of storing it. So you can see there on the right hand side, um, the image is changing, right? But if I, but if I use a random seed, you know, and I come back here and I come to number three, for example, that's what my number three plot is going to look like every time. If I go to four, you know, that's what it looks like. And just to show you, we'll come back to three and lo and behold, it's the same thing. So one of the things that I like to do when I'm generating these plots and getting ready to plot is I'll go through a bunch of different variations of the random seed. And when I have values that I like, I usually just comment them out to the right hand side here, you know, and it looks like I like three, seven and eight. We're looking at number three right now. We'll go ahead and take a look at number seven. Okay, that one's, that one's nice. And then we'll take a look at eight as well. And so there's eight. So they're all similar, but they're slightly different. Um, and one of the things I wanted to do is, is plot these out using a couple of different pens or a few different pens. And in order to do that, there's there are a couple ways we could approach that. But one of the simplest ways is just to assign different stroke colors so that in the Cameo we can see those different strokes and use that to pause the machine in between plots. So if we start with number three, and there it is, what we have is uh, you know a stroke of zero, so that's black, and for the time being I've commented out the SVG canvas the reason for that is that there's some sort of funky interaction with the SVG canvas and live server, which is what I'm running here to see this image update in real time. So I commented it out. Um, figuring out exactly what's going on is probably a, a task for another day. But for the time being, you know, we can save it by not running a live server when we save it. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and stop the server. And if you don't understand some parts of this, that's that's totally fine. Um, the you know the main idea is that we're creating SVG images, we're exporting them to the Cameo, and then we're going to use the Cameo to plot them using a couple of different pens. So we have our random seed number three. That's going to be our first variation. We have a stroke of zero. And what I'm going to do is uncomment my save line here. So I'm going to save this as super sweet bookmarks.svg. And what I might do is I'll go ahead and put in a number three there. And that number three just lets, lets me know that this was the uh, random seed three. It doesn't really matter, but we'll do it anyway. And what I have here <clears throat> in the second tab over is, is the same file. It's not zoomed in and it's, uh, it's a static file. It's not running on the live server. So if I refresh this, what we should see is we should see the image update to random seed three, and we should also see the file save. So we'll do that. And there it is. <clears throat> so we just saved this variation of number three. We're going to go in here and we'll change this to seven. 
and we'll change this to seven as well. Save that guy. And we'll, oh, and the other thing we need to do before I forget, we actually need to change the stroke. And it doesn't really matter what we change the stroke to, it just needs to be a different value. So I'm gonna change it to 50. Um, because we're going to do the, you know, the actual color with the pen. This is just to create a difference so we can recognize the difference inside of the cameo. So I'm changing the stroke to 50 and we'll refresh this again. And you can see it's, it's a little bit lighter. It's not super easy to see, but it is. So before I forget, we'll come back here, change this to 75. And now we're going to see, say version eight. We'll save that guy. We'll go ahead and refresh this again. And you can see it's getting lighter. Um, so we have three different images saved and they have different strokes so that we can use different pens. And what we're gonna do is create a pause on the machine in between the different colors. Um, and that'll make more sense here as we pull these over to the Cameo. So let's go ahead and do that. We're here inside of the software. We have the, the cutting mat set to uh, five by seven inches. That matches the size of the paper. And what we're going to do is stack the bookmarks side by side. The, the way the silhouette works is it has a 12 inch square cutting mat. The software kind of mirrors exactly what the cutting mat looks like. And that's what we're looking at. But for our purposes, we're just concerned about the paper and where the paper is going to go. So let's pull in those images to get started. Um, let's see here. It looks like I might have misnamed a couple of things and that's okay. So here's the first one. This looks like version three based on what I remember. And one of the things you can kind of do is if you look up here along the uh, ruler, there's also a ruler on the right hand side. I'm kind of keeping an eye on that. When you when you grab the image and attempt to drag it, it, it sort of shows you where you are. And I can see here that I'm squeezing just a touch over one and a half inches. And it looks like that's because my actual canvas size here is 1.51. So I'm slightly over the um, intended size. And I can also see that there's this one line here to the left. And so I'm trying to keep that, you know, just inside the edge of the paper and we'll see how that goes. But let's just start there and we'll pull in the other images and see what it looks like. So the next one is going to be the seven. And this one does look different. If we select this one. And you can see we have a little bit of space there, a little bit of a buffer. Let's go grab the third one. And what I'm gonna do now is, I think I'm gonna just take these and move them down slightly. And there are ways to do this more exact, but this is kind of one of those close enough type of things. The other thing is that there's, there's variation and imperfection anytime you're pen plotting something. It's just not, it's not super precise. But if you take a look at this, what you can see is there's a little bit of a margin here. There's also a little bit of a margin here. The margin on that side looks slightly bigger. I'm just going to pull this guy over and I'm just kind of eyeballing right now. You know, the other variables in this are how the paper is lined up with the cutting mat when you put it on. That's one area of potential um, difference. And then also you have um, just how the cutting mat is inserted in the machine and how it lines up with the pen. So let's uh, go ahead and get ready to do some of the plotting. We'll go get the paper ready and then we'll come back to the to the software and get ready to send it to the machine. Okay, so now we can get the cutting mat ready and we're over here on the other cutting mat 
which is this. This is the uh, mat that comes with the silhouette. And the way that it works is you can see there's that 12 inch grid goes up to 12 inches. And if you notice, there's this piece of blue on the top of it. And the reason for that is that this surface here is sticky. And that's what enables whatever you're either cutting or plotting to stay put. So the paper that we're gonna be using for this again is this Strathmore printmaking heavyweight paper. Um, it's, it's pretty nice and heavy. I don't know how well that comes through in the video, but it's five by seven and what we're gonna do is put it in position to match the the plot that we laid out so that we're we're plotting in the same spot and in order to do that it's just a matter of laying this down on the cutting mat and getting it all to line up and so this is one of the areas where there can be slight variation and just different things can happen you know if this piece of paper isn't isn't exactly lined up then the way that the, the lines are drawn won't be quite right. It'll be a little bit of variation. And that variation is what makes the plotting interesting. You know, I mean, it's, it's imperfect and that's kind of cool. But the other place is when we take this cutting mat and we'll feed it into the machine. And when it gets fed into the machine, if it's slightly off, either right or left, then you can have the same type of thing where your lines are drawn just a little bit of out of order. And it gives it that human element, even though it's drawn by a machine. So that's also cool. Let's go ahead and move over there. Okay, so before we start plotting, it's probably a good idea to just take a moment and talk about pens. Um, what I have here is uh, just a, a range of different pens. And what I'm looking for in these bookmarks is I wanna see something that's a little bit darker. Um, that's, that's my goal. And so I have a couple of black versions, I have a gray, and then these two are uh, darker blues. And they're varying qualities and thicknesses, and that's that's sort of visible here. But the two Faber-Castells, these are archival ink. The Micron pen is also archival ink. The Sharpie, I don't believe that it is, but it's kind of a good standby and it's pretty reliable. I use Sharpie for a lot of things, even even just to, to test out plots. This Uni pen is something that I picked up on Amazon, um, and it's it's quite a bit finer. But if you take a look here, let me see if you can sort of see this. This is the Sharpie. This is the Faber-Castell in black. This is the Uni-Pin. This is the Micron-Pin. And then again, the last Faber-Castell. So what I'm kind of liking here is this one, which is the Micron. This one, the Faber-Castell. And then also the Sharpie. Um, it's something that I'll use just to just as kind of a baseline, and I, I like it for that. Um, one of the things to take note of is that this was a new pen, and you can see here, even when you just press it down to the paper, you do get a little bit of bleeding, um, and, and that's kind of typical. It's, it's a wetter pen, and then eventually it dries out a little bit. But um, for now, let's go with this one, this one, and this one. So this one's gonna go away, and this one's also gonna go away for now, and this is what we'll use. All right, so now we have the Cameo on and the pen loaded. I'm gonna take the pen out just to get the paper loaded. I don't wanna draw any lines on the paper. So we'll click send and it'll go to the machine.
All right, and that's it. Let's unload it and go back to the cutting mat. All right, we made it back to the cutting mat. Um, so this is kind of interesting. You know, when you look at the plots, you notice that there are a couple of, you know, quote unquote imperfections. We have a couple of lines down here at the bottom where the pen was dragging. And so maybe the pen was a little bit too low in the pen holder. It's interesting that it only happened on a couple of lines though. So that, that sometimes will occur even just from um, the, uh, the cutting mat not being totally flat against the Cameo itself. It's just one of those things that happens. You also notice in the first bookmark, there's a really faint line here, and this is maybe because the pen wasn't fully primed. There's a dot at the end of this line, and this is because the, you know, when the machine pauses, it, it sort of just stops, and sometimes it leaves the pen up against the paper, and so you'll get some of these little dots like that, and this one is just, the Sharpie is a lot wetter, and so it kind of bleeds out there. And there's also a little bit of a, an imperfection, and it's a little bit hard to see probably, maybe there. You know, there's a little bit of an imperfection up here at the edge of the paper. And this is probably something that just got hit or where the pen dropped into the machine itself. And, you know, so your, your initial inclination might be able to say that this is, oh, you know, it's kind of messed up or something. But I think this is excellent. I mean, this is exactly the reason that the, the pen plotter is so cool, is that even though, you know, you're using a machine, or you're using the same image, you get totally different results. I mean, not the same image, but the same variation of an image. So I think this is a this is a really awesome outcome, even though it is imperfect, and the fact that it's imperfect kind of makes it neat as well. That's just part of the randomness and why why we're using the machine. So to remove the paper, one of the things I like to do, it might be easier this way, is to sort of slide a ruler underneath it. And the reason is that this paper really wants to stick to the cutting mat. Um, and if you do this, it sort of minimizes the amount that you deform the paper. You know, if you lift up and you pull it up, it has a tendency to get curled up. But when we do that, it stays relatively flat. So then the last part here is just cutting these bookmarks out. Um, and fortunately we use three different pens. So it's relatively easy to see where we might wanna cut. And one of the things we can do is we can kind of line it up using the grid as well as a reference just to to make sure that we're we're getting a relatively square cut. They're all a little bit different. They have some imperfections. Uh, the one that came out the cleanest is is probably the middle one. And this was the Faber Castell pen. So it does draw really nice. It doesn't give you the bleeding. It's it's a nice tool for the pen plotter. I, I definitely like this. This Micron pen also looks great. The only thing we had happen here is this little bit of dragging, but again, that kind of adds to the character of the bookmark. So that's it for this time. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.